I'm fascinated by how America is into legislating morality. It's an interesting issue. We're all moral people. Everybody in this room is moral, but I bet there's not two moralities that are exactly the same in here. It's all a little bit different depending on your life view, your life experience. We all are moral. Who can make a law to say one person's moral and one's not? Now, Europe takes it to quite an extreme. They don't believe that you can legislate morality. My friends in Europe tell me a society has to make a choice. Tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And then they always follow up by reminding me, you in America lock up 10 times as many people as we do per capita. Either you are inherently more criminal or there's something screwy with your laws. And I don't know really what, well, I think I know what the answer is. Uh, uh, but it's, when you go to Europe, you, you find red light districts. You got brothels. You got six story tall brothels all over Europe. Now, nobody says prostitution is good. It's an ugly thing. But the reality is there are lonely men all over the world that want to pay for sex. It's just always been, it always will be. You cannot legislate that away. You can't wish that away. You can't just say no that away. In Europe, they have legalized prostitution where the prostitutes are unionized. They can't have their license unless they're checked by a nurse to make sure that they're healthy and not spreading diseases. They run little businesses, and when they have a bad customer, they push their emergency button, and the pimp does not come to rec rescue them, but the local policeman does. Now, that's just their pragmatic approach to that. Doesn't work perfectly, there's still a lot of problems, but the attempt is to take the crime and the disease and the violence out of it, rather than criminalize it, you see. And it makes a very interesting sightseeing attraction. These kids are drunk. <laughs> when I'm in Scandinavia, the streets in May and June are filled with noisy, drunk teenagers. And I ask my Scandinavian friends finally, well, what's with this? And they say, well, it's graduation time. When the kids graduate from high school, the parents hire a driver in a truck, the kids decorate it, and the parents host the kegger. And they go from one parent's house to the next, just getting blitzed. And it's not that the parents want their kids to get drunk, it's just kids will get drunk when they graduate. In America, we make our kids promise not to drink and drive. And kids drink and drive, they lie to their parents and they die. In Scandinavia, they have a more pragmatic approach to it. Okay, kids, we'll provide this and a driver and you can party and nobody will die. In Scandinavia, nobody lies, nobody drinks and drives and dies, you see? So it's, that's a tough sell in America. But the point is, to me, that's a classic, pragmatic, harm reduction approach to a drug abuse problem. And Europeans are really into pragmatic harm reduction. I was recently in a coffee shop in a, in a, in a Starbucks in, in Zurich, and I needed to go downstairs to the bathroom. Went into the bathroom, all blue lights. It's confusing, why are these blue lights here? And then I realized, oh yeah, I can't see my veins. I couldn't shoot up if I wanted to. Maddening. And um, <laughs> then I realized if you have a, any sort of a warm public place in Europe, you don't want junkies in there shooting up. It's just bad for business, you know? And Europe has a lot of junkies in the streets. Now, a lot of my tourists would say, look at these liberal Europeans. They got junkies everywhere. They should get real about their drug laws. No, they don't have more people using drugs. They're just not dead or not in jail. They're in the streets. They're dealing with the problem. They're getting their lives back on track. Last year, the United States lost 18,000 people to heroin overdoses. Europe lost 8,000 people to heroin overdoses. We have two different ways of dealing with that problem. In Europe, drug abuse is a serious issue. People are not pro-drugs in Europe any more than they are here in the United States. They just take the crime out of the equation and like to deal with it as a health problem and an education challenge. And they like their way of doing it. The United States is more just say no, and we will lock people up if they disobey. It doesn't work very well from a European perspective. Across the street from that blue toilet, there is a machine bolted to the railing of the bridge that used to sell cigarettes. Now it sells syringes, government subsidized syringes. I never noticed this till a couple of years ago. And now I go around Switzerland and there's these syringe machines everywhere. You just don't notice them. But nobody is passing needles around. And there's no disease associated with needle drug use in Switzerland. 
because they have this progressive harm reduction approach to a persistent problem. Okay, you got your junkies and your heroin addicts, they got their needles, they can't shoot up at Starbucks, what's going on? Down the alley, they've got a discreet little place called Cafe Fix. It's a heroin maintenance clinic. Drug addicts know they can go there and deal with nurses and counselors. They can administer their addiction without robbing to get more money, to pay for it on the streets, without wondering, is this pure? Is this gonna kill me if I overdose? Without the nervousness of topping up just because they don't know where they're gonna get their next fix. They've got their fix. It's free, it's safe as it, as it can be. It's with the medical uh, help and counseling so these people can then get themselves back on their tracks and back in the workforce. I don't think anybody wants to be a, wa a wasted needle addict, and in Europe, they're dealing with it that way. I find it really, really interesting to learn about that, especially when you consider the frustration that America is having when it comes to dealing with drug abuse problems. Now, of course, the big issue in discussion in the United States these days is marijuana. How do you deal with the marijuana problem? Europe has a way to deal with, it's hard to talk about Europe in, in big strokes because every country has a different policy, okay? So I can talk, in general, Europe might be this way, but there are countries in Europe that are more hard on marijuana than the United States is. And there are countries where a joint is about as exciting as a can of beer. For 25 years in the Netherlands, they've not arrested people for smoking marijuana. It's been decriminalized. It would be legal, except that if you legalize it, you get into a trade war with the United States. My friends in Denmark tell me, be careful with marijuana. Every year we have to arrest a couple of people on marijuana charges so we can maintain our favored trade status with the United States of America. That's my country. Uh, in the Netherlands, you've got a coffee shop. It's, you know, it's a big business. Anybody who wants to smoke marijuana goes to a coffee shop. And uh, uh, in, a lot of people say, well, in the United States, isn't that gonna like, open the floodgates and everybody's gonna be smoking pot. They've had a 25 year experience with letting marijuana be sold in pubs legally and use has not gone up. As a matter of fact, the Dutch people, by everybody's assessment, our governments and their governments smoke half what we do per capita. And the Dutch smoke less than the European average, even though they have the most liberal laws. The conclusion, which is very clear if you look at the experience of 25 years of a track record in many countries, there is no correlation between use and how hard the laws are. A lot of Americans think there's a reservoir of people that would just love to ruin their lives by smoking marijuana if only it was legal. And the fact is, if it was legal tomorrow, you'd have a little blip in the use and then it would just mellow out and it would be about as it was before. 80% of the Dutch people, I've heard, have never smelled marijuana. It's just not a big deal. It's just if you want to smoke it, it's there. Some, you go through a stage and you get into it, and most people get over, the, over that in a couple of years, and some artist, artistic and bohemian types will be smoking it for the rest of their life, and that's better than criminalizing it as far as Europe is considered. In Spain, ten, no, in Spain, I was just there filming it, you'll see it, I don't know if tonight we're gonna show that show, but we'll see it in one of our shows. Marijuana is sold in shops just like, you know, you'd have a, 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 a Home Depot here. You've got, uh, um, you can't sell marijuana, but you can sell seeds and all the stuff so you can grow it on your own. That's the Spanish approach to it. In Portugal, 10 years ago, they legalized the consumption of all drugs, soft and hard, and they really like that. There's been no drug tourism because of that, and use has not gone up, and now people can treat it as a health problem rather than a criminal problem. Some people say, if it's, uh, isn't marijuana a gateway drug? And Europeans who have essentially legalized marijuana have found out that the only thing gateway about marijuana is if it's illegal. Then the only way you can get it is buying it from a criminal who has a vested interest in selling you stuff that's more addictive and more profitable. So these are all interesting issues and it's gonna be in the news and there's gonna be a lot of shrill discussion and bumper stickers. I've been talking about this for 10 years because I think it's, it's a harm reduction issue. There's 80,000 people in jail today in our country because of marijuana. Uh, we arrested 800,000 people last year because of marijuana. And you know, rich white guys don't get arrested. It's minorities and poor people get arrested. It's a real mess. And it's a, it's a horrible situation. And uh, we're gonna change it. I've been speaking out on it for, I've been a board member of Normal now for 10 years. You know, some people say, ah, we're not gonna take your tours anymore because I know what you think about marijuana. And all I can think is, Europe's gonna be more fun without you. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's, uh, 
I have to go to these uh, coffee shops in Amsterdam just because it's in my guidebook and I have to update the material. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, a lot of people wonder, okay, if it's illegal, aren't they going to be selling it to kids and everything? Nobody. I've never met anybody that wants to make marijuana legal for minors, you know. It's an adult activity. Um, uh, nobody if, who's intoxicated with anything should, should get off easy. In Europe, they throw the book at you harder than they do here if you're drinking or smoking and driving. Aren't they going to be advertising marijuana? No, they're not. You go into a coffee shop, and this is what I do when I research a book. I go into a place, whatever it is, in the case of a coffee shop, I'm thinking like a tourist. What do I do now? And how do I spend my money? There's no indication of what I can buy. So I asked the guy, well, what's for sale? And he says, well, because of our laws, I can't tell you what's for sale. You have to push that button. And I push a button, and as long as I hold it down, a light is turned on, and it illuminates the menu. But you see, this is sort of a legal splitting hair thing, but they've got a law that says you can't advertise it, you can't push it on people. I have to take the initiative to push the button. As long as I hold it down, I can read what's for sale. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun issue that people deal with, and uh, you know, it's, it's essentially legal. You can get whatever kind of joint you like. Uh, anywhere in the Netherlands. Uh, what I've learned about drug policy is not from talking to a bunch of heads, but from talking to, you know, policemen and judges and, and people who are uh, concerned about this in policy areas. And it's a fascinating area to study. If you want to learn more about it, you can just Google me, Rick Steves, and marijuana and get more than you'll ever realize. Uh,